Hey everyone, it's Holly and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some thoughts that I've been having after my first year of university. So these are going to be thoughts from, you know, what it was like to move over here, what my classes were like, how it was to make friends, all of these different thoughts that I've had throughout this year. Of course, the second semester has been a little bit crazy with all that's going on in the world, but these are going to be my overall more general reflections about how the year has gone, how starting university was for me. I currently go to the University of Geneva in Geneva, Switzerland, studying history and English language and literature. So I'm studying partially in French for the history part of my degree, and then partially in English for the English language and literature part of my degree. And overall, I've been really, really enjoying it, and I'm so excited to share with you my thoughts about how it's been moving from Canada to Switzerland, and what the university adjustment has been like from high school. So let's just get started with the video with all of these reflections. First of all, I didn't realize how hard it would be to say goodbye to my family. And as I was standing in the airport, leaving Canada, saying goodbye to my parents, I didn't really think about that moment and how hard that one moment would be. And I think that was the hardest moment of my entire first semester, was saying goodbye to my parents in the airport. And I can just, you know, see them standing there as I went through security. And it was really, really hard. And I didn't really expect it to be that hard. And same with saying goodbye to my sisters. My one sister wouldn't let go of me and wouldn't stop crying as I was trying to get into the car. And that was really sad. And now I'm getting all choked up, but, but really just that saying goodbye moment is going to be harder than you think if you're also starting university soon. So there's no way you can be ready for it, but it is quite difficult. The second thing is something a little bit more positive, and that is about how awesome it is to discover and bond with a new city. So I always loved, you know, those games you could play where you'd explore different places. I used to play this game with my dad's called Battlefield 1942, I think. Not because I loved war, well obviously I'm super interested in history, but the main reason that I loved this game was because you could go into the bunkers and explore the, the fields and things like that. So something that I've always loved is just exploring. And the thing about moving to a new city for university meant that I got to explore so much and I'm still exploring on a day-to-day -day basis, going through different stores that I'd never seen before, walking through the old town, going down by the lake, walking through new hiking trails. All of these things are so exciting Exciting and I love travel, I love exploring new cities, and it's so nice not just to have travel where you're just, you know, going here, here, here constantly, but where you can stay in one place and live in that place and really get to know that place super well. And that's what I've loved about the university experience because I really get to know one city specifically. One tip that really worked for me is at the start of university especially, it's really important to Always just talk to people. If you're sitting next to someone in line to get your residency permit, talk to people. If you're sitting next to someone in an auditorium on a welcome day, talk to them. If you're going on a tour of the school, talk to the people in your group. If you're sitting in a lecture, find someone that looks nice and sit next to them and strike up a conversation before the lecture starts. That's honestly how I made most of my friends was just talking to them in these passing by situations and then we would exchange numbers and get together and a lot of these people are still my friends today, so good tip and don't be afraid to be social and talk to people because oftentimes everyone else also wants to make friends and if you go up to them and start talking to them and asking them about what they're studying and what they like and what Hogwarts house they're in, then eventually you'll find the right friends for you. <laughs> Something I've really loved this year is having small classes and the University of Geneva, while it's relatively big, it's still quite small, especially for my faculty. So the University of Geneva has I think about 18,000 students or so, but my faculty is much smaller since it's the Faculty of the Arts, studying history and English. So there aren't a lot of people in comparison to like the huge science or psychology lectures where you have giant auditoriums filled with people. I think my biggest class was my history lecture, which had both first and second year history students. And that one probably only had about 150 people, maybe 200 at the max. It wasn't that big. And I loved that. I had some seminars where I had only like six or 12 people and it was amazing. It was just so nice to have that time talking with other students that are interested in the same thing as you and with the teacher and you learn so much when you can really engage in a small group like that. So if you have the opportunity to go to a school where they have small classes like that or if there are classes in your school that are small like that, I would highly recommend it because 
I personally found it to be one of the most enriching experiences in class because you would have just such awesome discussions and meet people and it felt more like high school in a way actually and a lot of teachers in high school I remember used to tell me like you know it won't be the same when you're in university because you'll have these giant lecture halls and no one knows anyone and you're just a number but in my experience it doesn't have to be like that and some smaller class environments can really feel like you still have that support and you still have that discussion based learning so if you enjoy that it does exist out there and it's not completely vacant from the university world it just depends how big your university is and with mine that was one of the big pros that i didn't even think would matter that much to me when i was researching universities but it actually has been such a benefit for me and i didn't even think that much about it before reading so in university i have read more than i have ever read before in my entire life and that's coming from someone who used to read like a book a day the thing is, you read and you don't even necessarily realize how much you're reading because it's not just books, it's not just textbooks. In fact, I didn't have a single textbook this year. I had some books that were put together by the professor so that we could have, you know, a collection of all the poems we were going to read or something like that. But we never actually had the typical textbook thing that I had in high school where it's just a thick book that covers everything in the class. And I think that's just due to the nature of my program since I'm doing history and English, so it's more the things that we read were actually literary criticism. We read a lot of historical articles scientifiques, so scientific articles, I think that's the right term. Well, historical articles and um, monographs. I'm trying to think of the translations because I keep going to the French like monographie, but monographs, I'm pretty sure is the right word. Basically, it's books that are written by experts in the subject. So historians, we read books by historians that were about a specific subject or we read articles that were by historians about a specific subject. So it wasn't one big textbook that just covered everything from modern history. It was, okay, now we're gonna read an article about this element of, you know, the divorces in Neuchâtel in the 16th century or something like that. Like it was very specific and that was something I wasn't actually expecting. I didn't realize how much more in depth you could go into a subject because in high school you really do stay much more surface level in your learning even though it feels at the time like you go quite deep um, but yeah there's just so much to read out there and I have been challenged like never before in my reading level in history it was in French so I had to get used to reading historical vocabulary and old French we read old French texts for medieval history and that was extremely difficult for me but I feel like I'm getting better and better at it and I can definitely read it much more clearly than I could at the start of the year and similarly for English I actually struggled a little bit with with reading in English because we've been reading sometimes the literary criticism we read in English is so challenging and I'm like all of the native French speakers in my course must find it so difficult because sometimes I'm there like what the heck does that even mean? I don't even know what this thing means in my own language. And it's so crazy because now when I read the historical things, I realize that the concepts are quite difficult. And sometimes when I try to explain them in English, I'm like, wow, if I read that in English, it would also challenge me. And so I realize that the challenges that I sometimes have with reading in French often come with the level that it's at because both in history and in English, we read incredibly complex texts. And I wasn't expecting that level of difficulty if you know what I mean because I thought it was quite you know easy to read historical textbooks in high school or you know we read pretty much no literary criticism in high school so I just didn't expect it so that was one thing that you might want to expect if you're going into the arts especially the next thing is that people in my faculty are so friendly so friendly really there are so many associations and things you can join I have joined the English Association, which is so fun. There's a book club that I've been a part of, and the people are just so nice. And we had some events, like we did a Lugaru, which is like the French version of Mafia, where you sit in a circle and you have to find out who the werewolves are. And so we did that, but English literature themed. The English department organized a little Christmas get-together in an evening where we had mulled wine and sang Christmas carols. And it's just such a welcoming environment, and everyone is so nice. and. For some reason I didn't expect it to be that friendly, but it just is so nice to have that welcoming atmosphere and I really did feel it and have continued to feel it throughout this year at university. As well, balancing life 
and schoolwork and orchestra and all the things that I do making YouTube videos, balancing it can be hard sometimes. And schoolwork for me is the one that obviously comes on top a lot of the time because, you know, if I have an essay due, I'm going to work on the essay first instead of my YouTube video. But just things like, you know, I have to do my laundry. I don't let myself not clean my sheets regularly or not do the dishes or not vacuum my floor because once I start doing that, then it just gets really disgusting and I don't want to live in filth. And I know there are some university students that do let it get that way, but I really feel strongly that I need to take care of myself and my space because I need somewhere to go home to where I feel calm and at peace and happy. And so, yeah, I definitely take the time for that. And the one thing that kind of I found the most stressful this year actually was orchestra. And that's because I would have to practice a lot because it was a little bit above my level in some ways. Although in other ways it meant that I was able to improve so much more because I was with people that are so strong and musical and amazing. But it was hard sometimes to find the time to practice amidst doing homework and being at club meetings and everything like that. So it can be a lot to manage, but it's also knowing when to say yes to things, when to say no to things. So, you know, at the beginning of the year, I went to the debate club meeting. I went to some different meetings, but I just thought, okay, what means the most to me? And I did those things. And even then it was a little bit tough to balance at times. So it really comes down to prioritizing and then doing those things well, rather than overwhelming yourself, which can be a little stressful. So not recommended. I did that a little bit in high school, but now I'm getting progressively better and better at that. I need to read for pleasure, and that is not something that I should feel guilty about. That was something that I struggled with in first semester because since we read so much for university, I wouldn't just always pick up a fun book for myself because I felt guilty about doing it. I always felt like there was something else I could be reading because there was. And that's something that is really important to me just as much as keeping my space tidy and taking care of myself. I need to read for pleasure, I need to read for myself. It's okay to just read like not classic literature sometimes. Sometimes it's fun to just read fun books and I think that's really important and it's something that we can easily forget being surrounded by academic papers and books and everything but you know reading for fun is something that I don't want to lose and so at the new year I decided to make it a new year's resolution to read more and I have done just that. I have read over 30 books this year so far and I've been sharing them with you guys. That was my video earlier this week and I'm gonna keep reading for pleasure because I kind of stopped doing that at the end of high school and in the beginning of university and I really missed it so we're gonna keep doing that. <laughs> Next, you don't need to love partying or drink alcohol all the time to have fun and to be happy and that's something that I knew going into university that I wasn't ever gonna be super into partying and I wasn't ever going to drink alcohol you know every week going out partying but it's something that I've kind of you know, come to terms with about myself. I know that I don't love parties, but occasionally they can be fun. And I know that I don't love alcohol, but occasionally it can be nice to go out to a bar with some friends and just get a beer and just, you know, be talking with your friends. It's kind of like going to a cafe and getting a coffee. It's just like a really fun thing to do to be social and to be with your friends. So in first semester, I went to the uni party and it was actually quite fun, but I don't think I could do that every week. I really don't think I could because I'm not that into partying. Like it was fun, but at a point it kind of is like, okay, this is too much. And then I need to go be alone and have some quiet time. And that's just the nature I think of being more introverted. It's the same with having friends. I love having friends and the lockdown has made me realize that hanging out with my friends is one of the most meaningful things I can do ever. And I also realized that I don't want to be alone all the time either. It's really important to find that balance between hanging out with your friends and practicing self-care and being alone because both of those things are really important and I thrive off of being busy and doing things and hanging out with people all day but at a point I'm just like okay I need to go to bed and that's it I need some time for myself I need to read I need to sleep I need to watch some TV occasionally and that's something that's completely normal and it's good to understand where your limits are and it's okay if you're not like a big party person but it's also super fun to just try out new things and go to parties occasionally so you know it's good to find that balance also another thing is not eating out saves so much money oh my god that is another thing especially with this lockdown i have saved so much money 
And one of the reasons is because I haven't been getting out coffees from you know, university. I haven't been going to restaurants with a friend in the afternoon. I haven't been getting food from the cafeteria when I'm too lazy to make something myself. I've saved so much money and it just saves you a lot if you can make all of your food yourself. And it's something that I've been trying to do all year, but progressively I'm getting better at cooking and that means that I save even more money. So that's a win-win situation. I'm getting better at cooking and spending less. What more could you ask for? <laughs> I've made friends from England and India and Germany and France and Switzerland and it's just so cool to have friends all over the world and you learn so much more outside of class than you do inside of class in some ways. I've learned so much about culture and about language and that's all just due to having friends that come from around the world because they've been able to teach me so much that I wouldn't have learned in a classroom setting. It's just so much about, you know, what people live like and you learn, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was common to drink sirpo in Switzerland, which is like this syrup that you mix with water and then drink it kind of like a juice. I didn't know that was that common because I'd never really had that in Canada and there are so many cultural references that I've been learning about. My next couple thoughts are about language. The first one is that English is everywhere. Really, even in my university setting, there are sometimes when our teachers give us sources in English and even the French students are expected to be able to read them. And that would never happen in a Canadian university being expected to read in French. Just never. So it's just something that English is so international. But the one thing that I've realized as an English speaker is how important it is to learn other languages because you get to access something that you could never access in your own language. And the friends that you can make, the cultures you can experience having known another language is just so valuable. And I think the mentality in English speaking countries that, oh, we know English, so we don't need to learn any other languages. It's a little harmful because there is so much value in learning another language for your brain, for the people you can connect with, for the cultures you can experience, for the YouTube videos you can watch. There is just so much value there and I feel like a lot of people ignore that or don't realize that and that's something that I think is really important and I've learned more about this year in university. The next one is my French which has gotten beaucoup beaucoup mieux depuis que je suis arrivée en Suisse à la fin d'août l'année passée. Donc oui ça fait Ça fait presque dix mois que je suis ici en Suisse et je pense que mon accent a beaucoup amélioré. Vraiment, je pense que je comprends beaucoup mieux. Je pense que dans les cours, je, je comprends beaucoup mieux. Il y a beaucoup moins de mots que j'ai besoin de chercher. Et je pense que ça vient aussi du fait que j'ai fait des amis qui parlent français. Donc, j'ai parlé français dans ma vie quotidienne et pas que dans mes cours d'histoire parce que oui, ça aide beaucoup. Mais c'est aussi dans, dans la vie en général que j'ai amélioré beaucoup mes compétences en français. Donc, ouais. I don't know if it's super obvious how much my French has improved, but my vocabulary and my the expressions that I can use have gotten so much better. And I'm just so proud of my end of year exams, which my history and my history of religions exams were both in French and I got 5.5 on both of them, which is out of 6, and I've just never been so proud of something in my entire life, like, even IB. In some senses, I'm more proud of this because it was in my second language, and it was freaking hard. It was a hard year. My god. It was quite difficult to do in my second language, and, you know, it got easier over time, but it was- there were definitely times where I was like, what the heck are they saying in this lecture? And I had to listen to so many lectures again because I didn't understand them fully. And now I can just listen to them, you know, on 1.2 speed or something and just, you know, type super fast. But at the beginning, it was really hard and I'm so happy that I was able to do well <laughs> and that I was able to prove to myself that I'm capable of being a competent writer in a second language. So yeah, that was my experience cette année. Donc j'adore la Suisse, j'ai ai beaucoup aimé mon, mon année ici à Genève et euh, ouais, je vais continuer ici pour les prochains deux ans et peut-être plus si je fais un master, mais on verra tout ça beaucoup plus tard. Donc euh, <laughs> let's continue with the next thing, which is about the bias in our school systems. And this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately, which is about how biased and subjective what we learn in schools is. 
in high school in Canada, I learned a lot about Canadian history. I learned a lot about Canada on the home front in the war, and I learned a lot about, you know, Canadian geography. But there are so many things that we don't learn about. You know, we were asked in my methodology class of history this year to label a map of Africa. And I felt incredibly embarrassed because I could only label a couple countries and I didn't really know that much about a lot of the history of Africa. We'd studied a little bit of South African history in high school in the IB program, but this year it was quite eye-opening to see how many areas of the world I didn't even consider and how many areas of history I didn't realize we never really talked about. And that would be the history of the LGBTQ plus community, that would be the history of the black community, that would be the history of women. And I didn't even realize how present this bias is until I thought about, you know, all of these great people I've learned about and the vast majority of them are white, old men, cisgender, able-bodied white men that, you know, are a product of the system that they come from. So of course there are lots of white men who got to these positions because of the system we live in. But I never thought to question or ask, what about the women? What about the place that they were given to be able to write literature and to be able to, you know, get into politics and vote? And of course we talked about women getting the right to vote in high school, but there are so many aspects of history that we don't talk about especially LGBTQ plus history, we pretty much never talk about that ever. Even in university, we rarely talk about that. And it's something that I really am passionate about, about learning the history of more marginalized communities. And that's something that I really want to put into practice moving forward, because the nice thing about university is you get to choose a lot of the seminars you take and you get to choose a lot of the projects you work on. And since you get all of this choice, and since you get choice in what literature you get to read, I am definitely going to be choosing to read things from marginalized groups and from women and from people that not everyone knows about. Not always Shakespeare. You know, Shakespeare is amazing. Shakespeare is awesome. I'm not putting down Shakespeare. I'm just saying Shakespeare is not all there is to English literature. There are so many voices out there to be heard. There are so many African poets and writers and, you know, Indian writers. I haven't read a single piece of Indian literature, but I know that it's such a vast and interesting topic and I would love to learn more about it. So yeah, that is where I'm at with that. I'm just realizing how much is in the world. And so this year I have thought a lot about how little I know and how small I am, but also how much power I have in the position I'm in to learn about and advocate for all of these different types of histories that were not talked about when I was in high school and that I don't honestly still know a lot about. The next thing is about having roommates. So my roommates who live in my apartment with me are super nice people and I'm so happy that I've made friends from meeting my roommates. And you know, we've done a little bit of traveling together, we've gone hiking and we eat meals together sometimes. And the thing that's really important is that you also need to set boundaries and also set a schedule of when people are gonna clean things. But it's also super nice if you can get to that level on a relationship with your roommates where you can say, hey, do you have any flour? I'm out. Sure, I do. And then later someone will say, you know, do you have any lettuce? I'm all out. And then you say, sure, here's some lettuce. And it's just nice to contribute collectively to the place you live in and to all keep it clean and to keep it, you know, a nice place to live in. And it's nice to talk about issues before they become big problems. So if you're noticing oh my gosh, this person never does this. Before you get to the point where you're like, oh my god, this person never does this. Just at the beginning, you just tell them and then that fixes things before they get too bad. And I know I'm talking from a place of living with wonderful people. So of course, there are people that you can live with which could be total uh, assholes <laughs> if you get my good place reference. So this will not always work, but it is really I think a valuable part of your time to get to know your roommates and to have a group meal together or to, you know, go into the city together or just, you know, talk to them civilly when you're in the hallway and set boundaries and all those types of things. So yeah, exercise is so important 
And I've learned that this year. I took a yoga lotties class for most of the year once a week, which made me feel so much stronger. I just felt stronger when I'm alone and it's something that's really nice to feel more confident in your body. And I think exercise, I found more of a love for exercise, especially during the lockdown. I've been going on lots of runs and doing workouts on my own. And exercise just makes me feel so good. The feeling that you get when you take a shower after exercise and then you're just like, ah, oh, I feel so accomplished. My body feels so good. That is such a wonderful feeling. And it's something that I kind of ignored through a lot of high school. So exercise is a very important thing. We have arrived to the last thing that I have been thinking about this year, and that is about marks. So I was really focused on marks in high school in a lot of senses, in terms of working really hard and I felt good when the marks kind of validated, you know, the work that I did and I think there's something great about that because of course they help you get into university and everything like that but marks aren't everything and school isn't life. Life is not school, that is such an important lesson, there is so much more to life than just getting good grades. University can be the experience where you learn so many things and I think the way that university is structured in Switzerland has really helped me to realize that marks aren't everything, the grades you get don't define who you are, and part of that is of course the way the system is structured here, which a lot of it is based off of just one final grade, or there are classes which are based on an attestation, which is the certificate you get if you pass the course. So you just have to do everything to the standard that they want, and then you get the attestation. And that's something that I didn't really realize could exist, having a system where you work to the standard they want you to work to. And you know, sometimes in my methodology class I'd have to resubmit something a couple times until it got to the standard they wanted. But when you have it at that standard, then you know that you've learned the skills that you need to learn, and it's not just based on a number. You're not a number, life is not school, and there is so much more to university than just getting good grades, really. You know, grades have hardly mattered to me this year and I've just really been focusing on learning the things I want to learn because I love all the reading I've been doing and the friends I've been meeting and the experiences I've been having. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that these thoughts help you out a little bit. Some of them might help you if you're going to university, others you might relate to if you're already in university, or you might just get nostalgic if you've already been to university. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!